Hey, come hang out as I compare the M1 version of the 16-inch MacBook Pro to the new M2 version of the 16-inch MacBook Pro and what it's like in the real world after using it for a few weeks. Hey everyone, it's Andrew here from Apple Insider. I've got two 16-inch MacBook Pros here. One is my M1 Max 16-inch MacBook Pro and the other is my all new M2 Max version of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I've been using both of these guys. I've used, been using the M1 series since it launched and I've been using the M2 series since it's launched. It's been a few weeks. So after running through my typical task, emails, video production, and everything between how much of a difference is there and is the new machine worth upgrading to, whether you had the previous generation version or an older Mac. I'm gonna help you answer that in this video. Also, and this is pretty sweet, Geekbench 6 just launched. So I'm gonna be able to give you some updated benchmarks with the latest benchmarking tools. The 16 inch MacBook Pro would come in two different versions. You could get an M1 Pro or an M1 Max, or now the new M2 Pro or the M2 Max. The M1 series would max out at a 10 core M1 Max, and the new models will max out at a 12 core M2 Max. The prior generation had a 14 or 16 core GPU with the M1 Pro or a 24 or a 32 core GPU with the M1 Max. The M2 series has a up to 19 cores in the M2 Pro and up to 38 cores in the M2 Max. When you're configuring a machine, you have a couple different options. You can go up to eight terabytes of internal SSD storage on either the old or the new generation. And you can go up to 64 gigs on the prior generation model, but the new one, you can go all the way up to 96 gigs of unified memory. Another change on these two machines, the new 6 inch MacBook Pro has more battery life. When watching video playback, you can get up to 22 hours of runtime compared to 21 hours on the previous model. Connectivity wise, the updated MacBook Pro now has Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, up from Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 on the M1 series 16 inch MacBook Pro. The design of both these machines is identical. Nothing has changed physically between the two. It comes in silver and space gray, has the same display, has the same keyboards, has the same ports on the sides. There are just two minor differences that I wanna to touch on. First is the MagSafe 3 port. It now comes with a color matched USB-C to MagSafe 3 cable if you get the space gray version and the HDMI port now is HDMI 2.1, which means you can connect an 8K external display or you can connect a 4K display with up to 240 Hertz. Of course, the use cases for these are fairly niche, but it's nice when you're picking up a machine that you plan to last uh, five or six years and you want to kind of have that future proof built in if maybe you are considering a 240 Hertz or an 8K display sometime in the next few years while you're still using the same Mac. Oh hey, it's me from like an alternative timeline. I'm jumping in here to thank my sponsor for this video, Clean My Mac X, brought to you by MacPaw. The Mac as a whole is an essential tool for work, education, play, and life in general. Developed by MacPaw, Clean My Mac X is a fantastic decluttering tool that can help keep your Mac running in tip top shape. In total, there are 29 tools built into Clean My Mac X. It can help by speeding up your performance, finding hidden junk folders, preventing it from getting malware, preventing it from overheating, plus it's a Red Dot Design Award winner and it is fully notarized by Apple so you know that it's safe to install on your machine. Recently, Clean My Mac X got a completely updated menu bar application, which helps take care of your Mac's health with six detailed monitors that provide useful information on your Mac storage, state of protection, CPU performance, RAM, battery, and network speeds. And here's the best part. The menu bar application is completely free to download and use for yourself. But if you do want to unlock the full version of Clean My Mac X, you can use the link down below in the description and get 5% off. That is 5% off Clean My Mac X. But here's the thing, it only works for two weeks. Two weeks and the promotion is done. So follow the link down below in the description or pinned in the comments. Thank you again to Mac Paul and Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. Now, uh, let's get back to the other content, right? 
Let's talk about some benchmarks. What I'm so excited about right now is Geekbench 6 literally launched today, and it's been updated to take advantage of the modern specs that you see in newer machines compared to Geekbench 5 that launched back in 2019. So you probably haven't seen any videos and comparisons with these numbers in them. These are brand new Geekbench 6 results. So let's go ahead and check this out. The prior gen M1 Max MacBook Pro this is the top of the line one. It had a 2376 on the single core and a 12359 on the multi core. The new MacBook Pro jumped to a 2558 on that single core and a 13321 on the multi core. The biggest thing here is, of course, improved single core performance, and there are more cores on this M2 Max. We have 12 cores on the M2 Max versus 10 cores on the M1 Max. Not a huge jump overall. Honestly, in terms of CPU performance, it's not bad, but it's just not a huge jump uh, generation over generation. I think the bigger performance jump here is going to be in the graphics. So let's go ahead and check out the Geekbench 6 Compute Metal Graphics Test. Again, we're comparing a 32 core GPU on the M1 Max compared to a 38 core GPU on the M2 Max. The M1 Max scored a 114,488, which is 15% or so below the 1,000 or the 134,293 that the new M2 Max scored. This is not a huge jump for me either. Like it's it's still a good jump. I mean, we're looking at 15% boost here. Apple says we can see up to a 30% boost in graphics depending on what we're doing. 15% is not bad by any means, but it is below Apple's reported. 30% gains. Now, in terms of actually using the machines though, graphics is the one area that I have noticed improved performance on. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about what it's like actually using the new M2 Max 16-inch MacBook Pro to get my job done. It's my usual workflow, right? I deal with uh, your normal stuff, like a ton of email, a ton of reading stuff online, that's par for the course, but I'm also dealing with a little bit more of a higher end workflow, though not as high end as we can get. So for me, I'm dealing with a ton of 4K video production, also dealing with large 42 and 48 megapixel raw photos that I'm editing and processing on the reg. But we can get a lot higher, right? You can deal with 8K video production, you can definitely be dealing with more multicam footage than I am dealing with, it, it can go much higher. So I'm not the nearly the maximum workload that this machine can handle. But I have noticed improved export times on video production and opening images and dealing with large images inside of Affinity Photo has definitely shown some improvement. Is it worth like upgrading from an M1 Max to an M2 Max? I don't think so. But if you have an older machine, this is it. Apple has kind of cleared up some of the bugs. We have improved performance here, as well as the future proofing with Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, and the new HDMI 2.1 port. All these together feel like a very polished product that while it's not a big upgrade generation over generation from any other Mac, I definitely think it is worth picking up. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think of the new 16 inch MacBook Pro with Apple's M2 series silicon? Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you'd like to grab any of Apple's new Macs, I have some deals for you. They're listed down below in the description. So be sure to check those out. Otherwise, stay tuned. Got more videos coming your way.